Tell us, if you will, what the Bible says in verse number 11 of Luke chapter 8. It says, Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, when they hear, they receive the word of word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in a time of temptation, what does it say? Oh, they fall away. So there's actually, in other words, my point, but I, I really felt like, in other words, not just, just jumping right to that thing, in other words, and just, uh, I really felt like, in other words, we needed to develop, in other words, this parable uh, that the Lord taught. And that which fell among the thorns, are they, and this is what I dealt with Wednesday, are they which, uh, when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. I didn't get to that Wednesday night. I'm going to do it in a little bit of an introduction. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, this is what I'm going to be dealing with to some degree today, he says, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask God to bless. Father, we come to you now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Once again, Father, asking you, Lord, to be able to uh, speak to my heart, if you would, Lord, right now. Help me, Lord, to be able to develop this in a way that the Lord would speak to hearts, show us how it is we might be fruitful and we might not fall away. And Lord, I love you today. Thank you. Praise you for this group it is we have this evening, uh, this this morning. Uh, pray, Father, right now, that Lord, that you would bless in a mighty way each and everything it is we say, Lord, and, and that it's brought forth, Lord, found in your will. And Lord, love you today. Thank you. Praise you. Ask for all the precious name of Jesus and for a sacred prayer today. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> The series, if you will, that I'm dealing with is others, how to keep from falling. This whole parable, if you will, start to finish, is dealing with, if you will, in other words, about the heart of an individual. Notice, if you will, I'm dealing today with the fourth point, if you will, of the idea, the receptive soil. The introduction goes like this. First of all, let's clarify the idea about the sower. The sower went out to sow his seed, and while he sowed, some fell by the wayside, was trodden down, the fowls of the air devoured it. The sower, if you will, of course is the idea, some preacher, some teacher, some soul winner, somebody, in other words, the sharing, if you will, or sowing the word of all, uh, the, uh, the, the word of God. So notice, if you will, that's the sower. The seed, notice, if you will, Luke chapter 8, verse 11 says, now this parable is this, the seed, what is it? Word of God. It's the Word of God. So we know clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt that every time the Word of God goes forth, whether it's read, whether it's heard, whether it's preached, whether it's taught, is the Word of God is being sown, if you will, in the words of the hearts, lives, and minds of men, women, boys, and girls. The soil, if you will, notice that goes a little bit further. It says, those by the wayside are they that when he, that, when the, that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their heart. That's what the soil is. It's the heart. That's right. So that's the idea of what we're dealing with, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, let me go a little bit further, if I could, <clears throat> by way of introduction so we can understand how important it is to make sure when we walk through those double doors come into the word, into the house of God, then, my friend, our heart is prepared to receive, if you will, the word of God. Amen. But that's not just the only time. Also, in other words, in your devotional time, yeah. you're reading at home yeah. as far as that goes. Now, I don't know about you, but in other words, sometimes whenever it is, that I, and I've got a perfect situation, I really do. I've got this one uh, uh, DVD that's got, in other words, the whole Bible over 73 hours. Uh, in other words, uh, on DVD, and if you're uh, if you're uh, w w would like to have one, we can get you one for about about five ten bucks, something along that line. And I sit, in other words, in 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 in, in my in the den. I got a big old gigantic television, and I kick that baby on there, my friend. There's where it is that as the as uh, uh, um, what's his name, Alexander Scorby, in other words, is reading that word to me. I'm reading it right along with him. So I, and I don't know about you, but there's where it is immediately. That's that's one of the one of the ways it is, and I think it's important for the verse to make sure it is your heart is ready to receive that word. Sometimes I'll be honest with you, things are on my mind, and I'm sitting there reading along. Next thing you know, is that I'm not no more paying attention than nothing. And how many of you know? In other words, all that is that's the cares of this life. Yeah. Come on, uh, and start entering in, starts choking that word, folks. You know what? Best to shut that thing off. Get your that's the idea about preparing that heart. That's yeah. what we're dealing with, if you will, the soil. Now, the roadside soil, simply in other words, the situation is the idea of its hardness. 
I want to go back through this whole thing. The solution is get saved. Get saved. It's as simple as that. Remember, all it was going to take was the idea of, in other words, was receiving that word or believing, and you can be saved. The next one, if you will, is the rocky soil. The situation is shallowness. There's where it is to me, my friend. The roots could not go down. And because of those stones and such, and what had you along that line, there's where it is, in other words, that that thing would not, could not, if you will, grow. The solution, get the stones out. If you will. Then the idea of the ruined soil, that's what we dealt with Wednesday night, is the situation was, it was the idea about corruptness. The solution, get the stickers out. Thorns, stickers, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. Okay, I needed an S. <laughs> get the stickers out. And how many here knows the idea? You need the verse to immediately get, if you will, the words, those thorns and thistles, mm -hmm. if you will, the weeds out of your heart. Otherwise, the verse, it's just ruined soil, and it'll choke whatever word there is. Now, I was not able to finish this, in other words, Wednesday night. It just seemed like, in other words, it was all kind of coming down Wednesday night. I thought, I'm not going to hurry through this whole thing because it's too important, in other words, for this part right here. So I thought I'd do it in, in an introduction. The last time we got together, in other words, Wednesday night, I was dealing with the idea about the production in this choking. First of all, notice, if you will, there came, in other words, no fruit to production. How many here knows that most of the time the idea of fruit is simply, in other words, uh, 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 brought forth for a production kind of a situation. That's on a mass scale, if you will. Notice, if you will, no fruit. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded, what does it say? No fruit. no fruit. That choking, if you will, got it to the point, my friend, that it stopped it start to finish. But I find it interesting, if you will, the idea, another thought on no fruit came, in other words, the next time. No fruit to production. How about the idea of no fruit to <coughs> perfection? Notice, if you will, in verse number 14, it says, And that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they heard, they go forth, are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. perfection. Okay. How many here has ever, in other words, went to a Walmart or something like some mark, any mark? <laughs> And all of a sudden, there's where it is you brought with it, where you bought with some some kind of fruit. My my wife, she likes she likes watermelon, and, and in other words, every once in a while, what we do is we get some cantaloupe or we get some watermelon, something like that, them little old plastic deals. Okay, we get them rascals home, pop that thing open, and pretty soon pulling them out and starts chewing on them, what have you. Pretty soon, guess what we found out? Well, but whatever it is, it's that fruit did not go to perfection yeah, right. by no stretch of the imagination. Yeah, right. Will you just go ahead and eat it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! I, I, I mean, you, you like fruit, my friend, that has quit, that has got to. I don't know about you, but I, I like good tasting fruit. I most assuredly do. I was raised in a, in a, in a, in a home, in other words, uh, over on the corner of. Uh, of Adam Street and, and 12th Street. There used to be six trees, if you will, in the back of, back of that yard. There was a, 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 a peach tree back there. There was a, a why can't I think of an apricot? Have you heard this before or was you there? No, you wouldn't there. <laughs> an apricot tree, a peach tree, apple. And man, I'll be honest with you, I looked so forward, in other words, when that thing would would, then we used to we used to walk to school and stuff. What have there used to be loquat trees. In other words, on the way to school, we start stealing. Uh, we, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we start to. Uh, I just love the idea about fresh fruit. I really do. But I don't know about you, but whenever the numbers, it's not been brought to perfection. I mean, you know, it ain't no good. If you know that, say amen. amen. How especially in other words, you go to one of those street vendors, and they sit there and they put all of the all the, the chili on there, uh -huh. and, they put, and they peel back. In other words, the uh, uh, banana. Not the banana. <laughs> the mango's mom, it's, it's mango. Yeah, it's mango. Mango, right. mango. Okay. Whatever along that line, there's they put. Hey, how, how many of you know that's gonna be some pretty good stuff? Unless, in other words, that food, fruit has not been, uh -huh. in other words, brought to yeah, perfection. How many of you know it can be? Yeah. The chili might be okay, but the rest of it ain't no that's good. That's right. And how many of you know the idea no fruit to production and no fruit, if you will, to perfection? So when I dealt with that idea, notice something, listen to me very carefully, because this is how this can be deceiving. If all of a sudden you look at your Christian life right now and you see no fruit, hardly in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you realize, my friend, no doubts the idea that, in other words, it is immediately the cares of this life 
the riches, the pleasures, and the cares, and the riches, and the pleasures of this life have choked that out to the point, my friend, it's brought, in other words, they had, let me go back to the idea, it grew up and choked, in other words, and no fruit at all. And I don't know about you, have you ever seen some Christians that see no Christian, no fruit, in other words, in their life at all? Yeah. Here's where the deceptive part comes in. It's the idea that they bring no fruit to perfection. perfection. It's not that they don't have some fruit, yeah. but cut into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I lived out there just outside of town here a uh, year, 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 years ago as a kid. Um, and I can remember, in other words, there was an orange tree. Whenever that orange tree, would, in other words, would, would, would blossom and bloom, in other words, and, and that, that, that fruit would get so big it almost, they started, some of them started falling off. You think, in other words, that's pretty close, in other words, to being good. I, every year I'd take one of those oranges off there, I'd cut that thing, and I'd sit there and I'd peel it. And I'd sit there and you know, pull one of those slices like that, and I'd bite into that thing, and I mean to tell you, it'd give you stinking lock jaw. I don't care. This, this was bringing forth fruit. The problem was, the fruit was, in other words, not to perfection. perfection. See, it's not that the idea that if you're not careful, that in other words, there might be some fruit in your life. You've got to ask yourself the question, is it any good? Right. See, I don't know about you, but the Bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist, the free will Baptist. John the free will Baptist made the statement. He said the axe is laid at the root of the tree, and every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. That's right. It said good fruit. Yeah. Right. How many of those, sometimes folks, there can be fruit brought forth. Hey, I don't know about you, but I love watermelon. And every time it is, sometimes here's what I'll do. I'll sit there and I'll say, Where, where's, where's the guy working in this area over here? Come on, hey, 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 come on, come over here. I'll bring somebody over there. I'll say, okay, pick me out one. Pick me out one. My wife said, for me, go get one. Pick me out one. Because if it ain't no good, I'm going to bring it back. Are you the expert over here? And you can tell immediately they don't want to go there. <laughs> they'll thump around, they'll smell it, thump it around, look at it, what have you, what have you. <laughs> and then like that, and go, okay, I think this is all right, yeah, okay. So, come on. It's not, in other words, there's, there's, there's not fruit there. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's, sometimes it's, it ain't no good. Yeah. And so you say, well, what, what in the world are you talking about? How many here knows the idea? Christians, my friend, need to be bringing forth Good fruit. Not just fruit. Good fruit. You say, well, and this is where I got, I, I got, I got, I ran out of time Wednesday night. So notice, if you will, well, what is the fruit, Brother Danny? Grand Jazz. I, I have no problem with the idea of saying the fruit, in other words, can be illustrated by the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Notice it's fruit, not fruits. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fruit. Yeah. Fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, out of that love, there needs to be a, a, an outgrowth of, in other words, of several different things. Out of that love, there ought to be joy. There ought to be peace, long-suffering, gentleness, uh, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Because if you bring forth, my friend, this fruit like you're supposed to, there's where it is the idea this thing can be a good situation. If you all know that, say amen. Now, you say, well, I, what about the idea about uh, uh, if it's an a, a, a orange tree, what's it supposed to bring, bring forth? Orange. Oranges. An apple tree is supposed to bring forth? Apple. Well, if it's a Christian tree, what should it bring forth? Christian. Christian. See, I don't have a problem with that. In other words, paralleling that also, the idea we'll see souls saved. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't have that kind of fruit in other words in your life, you'd be hard-pressed to see many souls saved, I promise you. Right. So this is, in other words, what maybe we ought to, might want to work on. Good. Work on this right here. I think the other will come. I believe the other will come. So, now, let's get into the verse to our point. The receptive soil, if you will, this is where we're at. This is what I'm preaching on this morning. The, the receptive soil, simply the situation, is the idea about fruitfulness. The solution, in the verse, for this to happen is get the soil right. right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just talk to you right quick. We've already went back through this other thing. So immediately, my friend, whenever we come walking through those doors right now, and even whenever it is that you're reading your Bible at, at home or wherever you're at, right, now, you need to immediately ask yourself the question, is your heart ready to receive that word? Yeah, sure. If it's not, 
it'll be choked out. If it's not, it'll be it'll be the idea of shallowed out. Mm -hmm. If not, if you don't understand it, the salvational message that there might be that was in that thing won't be there. Now, let me go if I could. Seven ingredients that make, in other words, this heart receptive. And finally, my friend, when it's receptive, ends up making it Fruit. fruitful. You all ready for this? If you are, say amen. Let me show you now. First of all, a prepared heart. Notice verse number 20, if you will, of Mark chapter 4. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and, what does it say? Receive it. Receive it. Now, let me, let me show you how this thing kind of unfolds, if you will. First of all, the preparation that there should be, first of all, to seek the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse number 3 says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among, what does it say? Well, that's interesting. It's even in the Old Testament, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Telling us clearly, in other words, there's no use in sowing, if you will, among the thorns. Why? It'll end up choking that word out. Yeah. It'll choke it out. Breaking up the fallow ground is the idea about, in other words, taking ground, if you will, and starting to break it up by plowing through the whole thing. Hey, how many here knows the idea that when something's plowing through your heart, it may hurt a little bit? Yeah. Hello? Yes. There's a possibility, in other words, there's where it is that you're preparing this situation. It might hurt a little bit, in other words, in the preparation of this whole thing. Yeah. How about a little bit further with the idea, in other words, this breaking up the fallow ground, sow not among the thorns, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time, was it say, to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hey, how many here knows? Fruit ain't going to grow, my friend, if rain don't come. Right. You're going to have to have some water. Yeah. You're going to have to have some moisture. Yeah. You're going to have to have God, my friend, come in, if you will, the idea. And seeking the Lord, my friend, is the point, if you will, about the idea about listening and reading. In other words, and hearing the Word of God to begin with. It's the idea about seeking the Lord and what it is He would have you to do. And my friend, that's where it is. We need to become prepared my friend, to receive this thing and to seek the Lord. That's the whole point out of this whole situation. Let me, let, me, let me go just a little bit further. How about the second, if you will, thought is the preparation to seek the law of the Lord. And Ezra, there's where it is. Ezra, my friend, was a scribe that turns around and what he does is he's getting, if you will, Israel ready, if you will, to go back the verse, to the land. So where it is, my friend, they've been in captivity. And Ezra is fixing to lead the people out of this situation. So there's where it is. He's knowing that he's going to need to prepare the Lord, but before, pre prepare the people. But before it is, my friend, he can ever prepare the people, he needs to prepare himself. That's right. Notice, if you will, for Ezra had prepared his heart to, what's it say? Mm -hmm. Seek the law of the Lord, and what else? Mm -hmm. And to do it, and what else? Mm -hmm. And to teach it in Israel, statutes and judgments. Okay. Now, let me, let, me, let me illustrate this thing. I got to thinking about this how many, now listen to me very carefully, this is, this is going to help somebody. How many here, it takes you an hour to get ready? If it takes you an hour to get ready, raise your hand. Now we're talking about, hang on, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. When I talk about getting ready, I'm talking about taking a shower. I'm talking about start, from start to finish, you're ready to walk out the door. Okay? How many here, it takes you about an hour, if it does, raise your hand. Okay? Okay, that's pretty good. Now, Put your hands back down. How many here it takes more than an hour to get ready? Raise your hand. Okay. How many here it takes you 45 minutes? Raise your hand. How many here it takes you 30 minutes to get ready? Okay, well, I'm going to take some right now. As the younger you are, it doesn't take about that older you get. It just seems like it's not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway through, you go. Uh huh. <laughs> That's the way you get But the older it is that I get, I'm going to be honest with you. Come on. Now, the reason why it is that I'm doing that is, in other words, I, I appreciate, I, I appreciate in other words, that, that some of you combed your hair. I see not all of you did, but I appreciate <laughs> that some of you, in other words, you combed your hair. I appreciate that. I appreciate, in other words, some of you, in other words, it is that you, that you, that you brush your teeth. I really appreciate that, especially if I get too close to you. I'm not going to, so don't worry about it, but just nonetheless, though, if, in other words, you brush your teeth, appreciate that. That you combed your hair, you brush your teeth. 
and all of a sudden that you put yourself some clothes on, mm -hmm. that you took a shower, mm -hmm. that you used deodorant, I appreciate that. All the people sitting right next to you all do also. Mm -hmm. It's the idea there's where it is slowly but surely as we walk through, in other words, your whole process of, in other words, of you getting prepared, in other words, to, to, to go out. I got a question to ask you. How many spend, in other words, the same amount of time, in other words, preparing, in other words, your heart right. to receive the Word of God? That's good. I don't know about you, but you realize the idea. You say, by the way, you did all that to be seen of men. That's right. Of course, that's exactly, in other words, what the scribes and the Pharisees did. They did every bit of that, in other words, just simply to be seen of men. Of men. And yet, in other words, the Lord, in other words, knew that they were, in other words, not right. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. That's right. How many here knows it's important, my friend, for the idea about a preparation? Of getting ready in other words to be able to receive in other words the word of God mm -hmm. like we're supposed to. I don't know about you, but but you take any 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 outfit that you want to in other words that does a uh, 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 growing of crops or something along that line. I promise you, they sit there and they prepare that ground in other words so that it's ready to be able to be as productive as it is that it can start to finish. There's no getting around that. Yeah. I worked for Jackson and Perkins in other words for 23 years. And I watched them for 23 seasons, if you will, preparing that ground and going to a great amount, I guarantee you, of cost, effort, and everything else along that line to make sure it is, my friend, that the crop it is that they were fixing to, that they were fixing to plant would come forth, in other words, in its fullness and in its perfection as much as it is that it could start to finish. Amen. As a matter of fact, I found it interesting, and I, and I got to go back to the, a thing it is that I could, I could really deal with about the idea about, we actually did what they called a fumigation. We actually, in other words, injected uh, 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 methyl bromide uh, tear gas, if you will, into the ground and covered it with plaster. That cost a lot of money to do that. And the reason why they did, it, it had some, it had, what it would do is it would actually kill in other words, some of the diseases that there were in the ground that sometimes uh, uh, attached itself, in other words, to the roses. Those roses, man, you could get $5.50 a piece, in other words, for those roses. Some of them, they were, in other words, a, a, a number one uh, a, a grade, if you will. And there's where it is. They, they spared, I guarantee you, no expense. Also, some of the some of the benefits also of that of that of that fumigation was also it killed in other words weed seeds also right along with that situation. I guarantee you when that ground was in other words was ready to plant, it was about as clean as is as you could get it start to finish. Now sometimes the weeds went ahead and came up anyway, and that's what's going to happen, even in other words, in life. But when it ever, my friend, it did come up, we had crews going through there, I guarantee you, that would get those weeds out of that situation and turn around and make sure, in other words, there weren't any in other words, around the edges of those fields and what have you. And the reason is they knew that those weed seeds would get right back into that crop and turn around and choke out, in other words, those, uh, uh, what, we, what we were trying to grow. Right. So how many hear the idea when we're talking about the idea about, about preparation? I don't think you can spare too much time, too much cost, Yea, if you will, the words companies do this on a regular basis. How much more so should Christians do this? Right. Spare no expense. Spare no time, if you will, making sure when we come through those doors, if you will, that our hearts are ready to receive the word of God so it might bring forth the fruit, my friend, that it's supposed to. Yeah, that's good. Now, let me go just a little bit further with this. How about the idea? Because unprepared soil is an unproductive soil. How about the idea about the words, not only a prepared heart, how about a prudent heart? Mm -hmm. Prudent simply just means the idea about wise. Mm -hmm. The idea about, and I, I, I actually, the words, uh, yeah, we'll just call it, just call it, there we go. The idea of circumspectly, the words, sitting there checking everything out, the words, like it's a, making sure everything is, is exactly like it's supposed to. Being wise about how it is, the words you go. Now, notice if you will. First of all, the continual hearing of the word of God. Notice in Matthew 13, 3, 23, but he that receiveth seed into the, good, uh, into the good ground is he that heareth, see the E-T-H, heareth the word. Okay, how many here knows, folks, the idea about hearing this word on a regular basis needs to be done on a regular basis? Yeah. I don't know about you, but sometimes the idea of the word of God is illustrated, if you will, pictured as the idea of, in other words, eating. 
Yeah. It really, really is in the Bible. How many here knows the idea that in other words, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, how would you like to only eat four times a week? Now, I don't know about you, but I can see across the numbers of this room, people numbers really wouldn't care anything about that. Right. How about the idea, you say, well, what do you, what, 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 what should you, you have John be the idea about three square meals a day, yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I'm just making the statement, in other words, that, that, that's, that's just the normal thing of how things are supposed to go. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is your point about that whole thing? Well, then me just doing Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So, so when, when are you going to get all this other stuff going? How about the idea, there's where it is immediately, my friend. You need to hear the Word of God. You need to read yeah. the Word of God. Yeah. You need the Word of God that works in your life on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you right now, one of the biggest problems of why people are falling left and right is because they do not get enough of the Word of Almighty God. Right. They don't. Amen. Not at all. And here's where the idea, the continual hearing of the Word of God, here's the reason why. The Bible says... I can tell you what it says. You have no idea where it's at. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. So, I've got a question to ask you. How is it, in other words, you will make sure it is, in other words, it is that you hear the Word of God as much as it is that you should? You know, I, I, you know, you say, well, brother, you beat this to death. You really are. How about the idea about 11 minutes a day? Mm -hmm. uh, the idea to read the whole Bible all the way through, in other words, in one year. You've heard me say that over and over and over and over again. I mean, who knows the idea? Listen to the, hearing the Word of God on a regular basis, my friend, is something it is that's needed. There's no getting around that. And I think, in other words, there's where it is. We have got to grab a hold of the thought and the idea. This is a must, in other words, in our lives. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, that's what the Bible says clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, in Romans chapter 10 verse number 17. Then how about the idea of the continual, not only hearing of the word of God, how about the continual, if you will, heeding of the word of God? It's one thing hearing it, it's another thing doing it. As a matter of fact, we talked about the idea of the prudence mm -hmm. or the wisdom, if you will, of the idea about hearing the word of God on a regular basis. How about the idea the Bible says this in James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, it says, Receive ye with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving, in other words, your own selves. I'm really afraid, I most assuredly am today, that in other words, we're not getting enough of the word of God in our lives as a Christian. Somebody made the statement, in other words, here just the other day, and I can't remember what the context was, about a four-year-old, in other words, that had learned the Word of God. Yeah. Brother um, Juan. Huh? Brother Juan. Brother Juan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four-year-old, uh, read the whole King James Bible in one year. Oh, yeah. Four-year-old kid read the King James Bible in one year. Uh -huh. How many here knows, in other words, uh, that, that's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Then the idea of, in other words, where it is, we're talking about the idea about about member, the Bible memorization of what had you on that line, and how, how the sister Dina was talking about the idea about memorizing those verses and what had you, and how the others and through our school, what had you, slowly but surely, they're building on this whole thing. Yeah, I, I mean, he knows that's a good deal. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, the, the more the Word of God that you saturate yourself with, I promise you, my friend, that's more productive your heart's going to be. In other words, to be able to receive the Word and actually, in other words, do something with it as, as far as that goes. There's just simply just no getting around that. Now, let, let me, let me, if I could, right quick. Um, and, and that's why I, I, I appreciate our curriculum. First of all, I appreciate our, our curriculum, first of all, because it's based on the King James Version and always will be from what it is that I understand. I appreciate that. I most assuredly do. I appreciate the idea that, in other words, that there are, uh, those paces, those workbooks and what have you, are just uh, consistently, in other words, just jam-packed full of Scripture, start to finish in no uncertain terms. How many of you know there's wisdom in that? If you don't know that, say amen. And there's a reason for that. We're trying to make the lives of those young people, my friend, if you will, productive, start to finish in and out of this whole thing. Now, let, let me... 
Let me just kind of go on if I could right quick. And there's where it is, of course, I'm, 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 I'm not going to beat this again. Remember what the Lord said? He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, prudent. The idea about, in other words, a wise individual, if you will. In other words, hearing, in other words, the word of God on a regular basis. Now, let me go on. How about the idea about a perceptive heart? And this is where it is that I'm going <clears> to... I'm going to end up finishing up the third thought. The perceptive heart, notice if you will, in Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 23, there's a problem, if you will, in the idea of, in other words, in this perception. Uh, the Bible makes a statement in Matthew chapter 13, verse number 23. If you'd like to turn there, you're certainly welcome to do so. But he that receiveth the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Okay, how many here notice, in other words, whenever you don't understand something, I'm hard-pressed to figure out how it's ever going to be productive. So that's the idea that sometimes, in other words, you need to ask some questions. I don't know about you, but I used to bother, in other words, a lot of Christians, in other words, that were uh, uh, smarter than me over as I was growing up, in other words, in the Lord. I listened to a lot of uh, individuals, if you will, that would preach and teach. I'd ask questions about things it is, in other words, that I did not understand. Can I tell you one of the biggest problems of why Christians fall? It's because they don't have, if you will, just a general, basic, if you will, understanding of the Word of God and what the Bible teaches from start to finish. <clears throat> have no clues. That's why you can build whole denominations, if you will, on, 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 on teachings, if you will, that, in other words, that do not find in other words, much support, hardly at all, through and throughout the Bible. This prosperity preaching and what have you. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't believe in, in other words, in, in, in God prospering, in other words, according to, to, to your need. But the idea that, that it'll bring you to a greed. Uh -huh. Hey, how many here knows? That's not taught in this Bible. That's right. It's not taught in this Bible. The Lord, the, the Apostle Paul said, in other words, having raiment and food, mm -hmm. therewith you ought to be content. That's why, my friend, cults and isms, false religions and what have you, can find their ways growing up out of America and cursing, if you will, the world. The reason is because, in other words, most people, in other words, do not know enough about the Bible, generally, my friend, to be able to uh, be able to deal with it. Uh, let, me, let me go on. This perceptive heart, if you will, the reason why it's important, in other words, to understand the Word of God. Does anybody remember, if you're in Matthew chapter 13, go back to verse 19. It says, and any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth it away that which is sown in his heart. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because if it stayed there long enough, he could, he could believe and end up being saved. Yeah. But the idea about the words not understanding it immediately stops that salvational process. Stops it. By the way, i got to go back to the idea that whatever numbers afterwards, you receive the Word of God even on good ground, and you don't understand it, the devil's still going to take it out of your heart. Yeah. You say, well, what do you do to the verse when all of a sudden you don't understand something? Ask somebody. Study it out. Figure it out. Find out. Because I guarantee you, once it is, and I guarantee you, you find out what the Bible teaches, in other words, generally, and then specifically, in more detail than what have you, that will strengthen your Christian life, I promise you, my friend. And there's where, there's where fruit, in other words, will come. Now, let me, I'll illustrate it, end it up right now. That's it. We dealt with the idea of the problem in the perception. How about, in other words, the prayer in the perception? How about the idea that Psalms chapter 119, verse 18, we sang a song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. It sounds like a prayer, doesn't it? It's the idea we're asking God to open the, the eyes of our heart. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. How many here knows the idea about praying before you come, in other words, to the, to the church and asking God, in other words, to open your heart, your life, and your mind, my friend, so you might receive the Word of God like you're supposed to? He said, open thou mine eyes. He said that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Now I'm going to end it up right now. 
Does anybody remember the story it is that I usually preach sometimes uh, on Resurrection Day? I talk about, in other words, the two walking on their way to Emmaus. How I always illustrate the idea of the distance that they that they walked was about the distance of, in other words, from Wasco to Shaft. You guys remember that story? Do you remember that there was the Lord, their eyes were holding. The Lord walked along with them. And while they were walking, in other words, that distance, what did they say it took two hours? It takes two hours, in other words, to walk. For two hours, the Lord Jesus Christ opened the scriptures from Moses all the way through the Old Testament. For two solid hours. And sits there, if you will, and preaches and teaches, if you will, the idea of the word of Almighty God. Now, whenever they get, in other words, to Emmaus, you remember how the Lord acted like, in other words, he's going to leave? And how it is, they said, whoa, 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 no, 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 come on, come on. We want you to stick and stay with us. Do you remember how, in other words, he did stay there? Yeah, well, there's the prayer. Go back to the prayer. They need to see the prayer. He said, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's what David, if you will, is praying in the verse to the Lord. Then the next thing of it is, if you will, right quick, this is the story that I'm fixing to tell you. After he sits there and turns around and preaches, if you will, the whole Old Testament, I find it interesting. You know what the Lord has to do? And by the way, these disciples, these disciples right here, that's the two on the way to Emmaus. But these disciples, if you will, right here was his 12 disciples. I got a question to ask you. You realize, in other words, these 12 disciples, well, I say the 12, in other words, we're talking about the, the, the main part of the disciples. You do realize, and what have you, that the, the, these, these disciples spent three and one half years with the Lord Jesus. Listening and him, him preaching on a regular basis. Hearing the word of God every single day coming from the veritable mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. I got a question to ask you. When they got in the upper room and the Lord started making a statement that he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to end up, in other words, being crucified, that he was going to end up, in other words, raising the third day of the, uh, on the third day, being crucified, being killed, and going to be raised on the third day. Did those disciples have a clue? No. Well, that's interesting. It's not like the Lord didn't tell them. Yeah. Right. It's not like the idea that, in other words, that this thing was not preached and taught on a regular basis to those disciples. i got a question to ask you. How in the world can you spend three and a half years with a veritable son of almighty God, listening to the word every single day, watching the word every single day, handling the word of life every single day, and all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, missed the whole thing to the point they ended up scattering like cockroaches, yeah. didn't they? They ended up every single one of them falling. You want to know why? Because their hearts had gotten to the point that they had gotten hardened, got through, got, got completely uh, 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 to the point where, in other words, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches certainly got one of them. Okay. The pleasures, the lusts of other things coming in, choked that word out to the point they stinking didn't have a clue, did they? You say, well, this thing's, this is a bummer, dude. <laughs> Bob, excuse me, brother dude. Pastor dude. Well, how about the idea of this right here? It says, and he said unto them, this is the Lord, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, mm -hmm. that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning mm -hmm. me. It wasn't like he didn't already tell them. Mm -hmm. He said, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You 
Sarah, well, what's your point? Well, I don't know about you, but those, uh, those disciples did pretty good right after this. Yeah. That's right. They first of all gathered and bonded together, if you will, in an upper room, praying, listening to their will for his teaching for 40 days, in other words, to nail this thing down, 10 days in a prayer meeting. Then all of a sudden, when they came out of that, that upper room, if you will, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved. Yeah. I got a question to ask you. Does that sound pretty fruitful? Yeah. You want to know why? It took, in other words, for the Lord to open their understanding. See, I'm afraid what happens is that we come walking through these double doors. Our hearts are not ready. Our hearts are not prepared. Our minds are not open, in other words, to be able to receive this situation. And we wonder why in the world this thing ain't working like it is we think it should. Why this thing is, in other words, not going like it's like we believe it yeah. should be. And when all of a sudden something happens and what have you, the next thing you know is it's not, and listen to what the, what the Bible says. Immediately, in other words, what happens is, is the idea, they end up, Getting to the point where, in other words, they get offended, they start withering, their like, Christian life starts withering away, and they end up falling away. Yeah. Or the idea that, in other words, the worries of this life starts to choke, in other words, their life out to the point that they get to the point where it is, in other words, they can't bring forth any fruit. Or, if you will, the wealth, which is the deceitfulness of riches, choke, if you will, their life. And all of a sudden they start eking out, in other words, a little bit of fruit. Mm -hmm. But that fruit, when you get right down to it, doesn't come to perfection. Or the idea that, in other words, something comes out, it looks good. Listen to me now. It looks good. And then all of a sudden, there's where it is. And somebody, in other words, partakes of that part of their life. And they find out it's just as sour as can be. And they bring no fruit to perfection simply because of the wantonness, the lust of other things entering in, the pleasures of this life. And all of a sudden, there's where it is where they get a real good close look at the Christian, at some people, at some Christian's life and what have you. It's bitter. There's something wrong with it. See, this is where I think we miss it at. It didn't say, it didn't say completely no fruit. It says also no fruit, no misunderstanding, no fruit to perfection. Mm -hmm. Let's bow our heads.